Hi there. In this video, we're going to look at the integration by parts technique. Okay, so let's take a look at the integration by parts rule. The integration by parts rule says that when our integrand is a product of two functions, we can try using the integration by parts rule. And the integration by parts rule says that the integral of u times dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v times du. So this is my integration by parts rule. Now first, to see why this works, we can start with something you already know. Uh, you hopefully remember the product rule from finding a derivative. We can find the derivative of a product by taking the first part of the product times the derivative of the second plus the second part of the product times the derivative of the first. So this is simply the product rule for finding a derivative. Now, integration by parts is about integrals. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to integrate each term in this equation with respect to x. On the left hand side, we simply have the integral of the derivative of uv. Well, that would simply be uv. Because remember, integral gives us the antiderivative. And the antiderivative of a derivative should be uh, the function we started with. Uh, notice the two integrals on the right hand side. We can just sort of simplify this expression. Uh, dx over dx should be equal to 1. So if I just simplify those, I end up with the integral of u dv plus the integral of v du. And now if I simply subtract the integral of v du from both sides of this equation, I get the following statement uv minus the integral of v du is equal to the integral of u dv. And that is exactly what the integration by parts rule states, uh, albeit backwards, but it says the same thing. So the integration by parts rule is really just a consequence of the product rule for differentiation. Now, that being said, that does not mean we need to apply the integration by parts rule every time we see a product. Many times, there is a better way uh, to find the integral. I'll highlight this with a couple examples. These two integrals, I would not suggest using integration by parts because there are much simpler ways uh, to do each of these. So one thing you should ask yourself is, can I just multiply uh, the two parts of my product together? And in this first example, the answer to that question is yes. I can very easily multiply these together. Okay, So if I multiply those two factors together, I wind up with 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 2x minus 4. So this is simply a polynomial, so I don't need any special rule for products here. I can just use my power rule to find the antiderivative. So here I would have 2x to the 4th divided by 4 minus 4x cubed divided by 3 plus 2x squared divided by 2 minus 4x plus c. And if I simplify some of these terms, I end up with my final answer, 1 half x to the 4th minus 4 thirds x cubed plus x squared minus 4x plus c. Okay, so there's no reason to use uh, the integration by parts technique to find this integral. The same could be said for the second integral, albeit for a different reason. I cannot multiply x squared by an exponential function. So it's not that I can do that, but what I can do here is a traditional u substitution. Notice that the degree here in the exponential part of this product is 3, and the degree here in the polynomial part of the product is 2. Anytime you have that one degree separation, you should try to do uh, a traditional u substitution. So what I would do here is I would let u be x cubed. The derivative of that would be 3x squared, which means du is the same as 3x squared dx. This is going to allow me to rewrite my integral in terms of variable u. We know that e to the x cubed can now be written as e to the power u. 
and we know that x squared dx appears right here in this equation, which means I can replace x squared dx with one-third du. I would just multiply both sides of this equation by one-third. So now I have one-third integral e to the u du. The antiderivative of e to the u is just e to the u. So my final answer here is one-third e to the x cubed, since that's what u was, plus c. So again, in this second example, I do not need integration by parts because a traditional u substitution works just fine. So now let's look at an example where we should use the integration by parts rule. So if we're going to find the integral of x times e to the 3x dx, uh, notice this is somewhat similar to the example we just did, but we no longer have that degree of separation between the polynomial part and uh, what's in the exponent. So my u substitution isn't going to work here. So let's try uh, working this as a product and applying the integration by parts rule. Now remember, multiplication is commutative, so you automatically have two options. We could look at it as x times e to the 3x dx, making this my u and making this dv. Or we could do it the other way around and make e to the 3x u and x dx as my dv. But we need to call one part of this product u, and we need to call one part of it dv, so we can use this rule. Okay, so first let's try it the first way. So I'm going to let u be x, which means e to the 3x dx is dv. Now there are two other pieces we need. We need a du and we need a v. du should just be the derivative of u, which is going to be 1 times dx. Now let me just explain this, uh, this times dx part here. Uh, if u, if I'm letting u take the place of x, really what we have is the derivative of u with respect to x is 1, or du over dx is equal to 1. That's just the derivative uh, of x. And then if I multiply both sides of this equation by dx, that gives me du equals 1 times dx. So when you see me uh, expressing du as 1 times dx, that's why that dx is there. And then v should be something whose derivative is e to the 3x. So in other words, v should be the antiderivative of e to the 3x, which is 1 third e to the 3x. Okay, so now we have the four pieces we need to use the formula. So the integral of x times e to the 3x dx, according to the integration by parts rule, is u times v, so that would be this expression times this expression, so that would be one-third x e to the 3x minus the integral of v times du, which would be this times this, so that would just be one-third e to the 3x dx. Now what you always want to look for when you apply this integration by parts rule is, is this new integral simpler than the one we started with? So is this simpler than the original integral? And the answer here is yes it is. So that means we probably did it right. You'll find sometimes the integral will become more complicated, which means you probably did not do it right. That would indicate we should switch the order and do it the other way. Okay, so since this works, I don't need to do it the second way. Okay, so we don't need to do it this way. All right, so let's continue. This is one-third x e to the 3x. I'm going to bring the one-third to the front of the integral because it's constant. And then I'm going to take the antiderivative. So my first term is one-third x e to the 3x minus one-third times one-third 
e to the 3x because the antiderivative of e to the 3x is one-third e to the 3x. So my final answer here is one-third x e to the 3x minus one-ninth e to the 3x and plus c since this is an indefinite integral. Okay. So this is an example where integration by parts helps us find uh, the integral where some of our other methods fail. Here's a second example. The integral of x squared times the natural log of x. Okay. Uh, again, there's no good way to multiply uh, these two factors together and uh, a substitution isn't going to help us very much. So we're going to try to apply the integration by parts rule. And again, we have two choices. We could let x squared be u. We could let natural log x dx be dv. Or the other way around, we could let natural log of x be u, x squared dx be dv. Those are our two options. Okay? So if I use the first option, uh, u is x squared, and dv is natural log x dx. du should be the derivative of u, so that would be 2x dx. And v should be a function whose derivative is natural log x. So in other words, the antiderivative of natural log x. If you think about that, uh, you might be stuck. I don't really know what that is myself off the top of my head. So that would indicate maybe this isn't the way to do this because I don't know what the antiderivative of natural log x is. Now, if you find yourself thinking it's 1 over x, that's the derivative of natural log. The derivative of natural log x is 1 over x, not the antiderivative. So let's try this the other way. Let's let u be natural log of x, and let's let dv be x squared dx. Now, the derivative of u is 1 over x dx, and v is the antiderivative of x squared, which is one-third x cubed. So this is better because at least I can identify uh, the four parts that I need to use the rule. Okay? So the integral of x squared natural log x dx, I'm going to use what I did over here and apply the integration by parts rule. So again, I start with u times v, which would be natural log x times one-third x cubed minus the integral of v times du, which would be one-third x cubed times one over x dx. Okay? Now this first term, typically we would put the polynomial on the front, so I'm going to rewrite this as one-third x cubed natural log x. And then I'm going to simplify this integral the one-third is a constant, so I can bring it to the front. And x cubed times 1 over x is simply x squared. And again, the question when you, ask, you want to ask yourself is, did my integral become simpler? And the answer here is yes, it did. Because now I'm integrating x squared instead of x squared natural log x. So now I have one-third x cubed natural log x. I'm going to do the antiderivative of x squared which is one-third x cubed. So my final answer is going to be one-third x cubed natural log x minus one-ninth x cubed plus c. And that's my final answer. Okay? So again, remember, when you use the rule, there's always two options, because you can write your product either way. Sometimes uh, one option works better than another, and that's what we found here. The second option worked better, so it was better for me to switch the order here. And let's just look at one more example, and this is going to be a definite integral. So remember, when we're doing a definite integral, our answer should be a number. Right, so we don't know what the antiderivative of natural log of square root x is, at least that's not one of our basic antiderivative rules. So one thing you might try is integration by parts. Okay. So let's let u be natural log of root x, 
and let's let dv just be the dx part. So again, I'm letting this be u. I'm going to let this be dv. Okay? So then du would be the derivative of natural log of root x. I'm going to have to use chain rule to do that. So the derivative of natural log squared x is going to be 1 over squared of x times the derivative of squared of x, which is 1 half x to the negative 1 half dx. And then v should be the antiderivative of 1 dx. So that would be x because the derivative of x would be 1. Okay, this is a little weird, but we can simplify, especially this d, du part. If I simplify this, this is 1 over root x times 1 over 2 root x dx. So that's actually just 1 over 2x dx. Okay, so now if I apply the integration by parts rule, I can say that this is equal to u times v, so that'd be this times this, so that'd be x natural log root x, evaluated at 1 and 9. So we don't want to forget that we need to evaluate this and calculate a number. So I'm going to go ahead and put that reminder there. So we're going to come back and evaluate this at x equal 9 and x equal 1, minus the integral of v du. So that would be v times du. from 1 to 9. Okay, I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to do all my evaluating at the same time. So I'm going to leave this here for now and I'm going to finish up this integral. If I simplify uh, x times 1 over 2x, that's just 1 half. So the second part of my integral, so the antiderivative of 1 half is just 1 half x. And again, I want to evaluate this at 1 and 9. So now I'm ready to find my number. And if we want, since both parts of this uh, equation are evaluated at the same values, I can just combine this into one. I can just do this all at once. So I can just take the function x natural log squared x minus 1 half x and evaluate it all at once rather than do uh, two separate evaluations. Sometimes on these you'll find that you have to change the variable for part of it and you'll have to do them separately, but here we don't because I didn't have to change the variable anywhere. So now if I plug in 9, I get x natural log root 9 minus 1 half of 9. And if I plug in 1, I get 1 times natural log of root 1 minus 1 half times 1. So this would be 9 natural log 3 minus 9 halves. Natural log of 1 is 0, so I would just have plus 1 half. So that would be 9 natural log 3 minus 8 halves, or 9 natural log 3 minus 4. And that would be my final answer. Okay. So again, I showed you a couple examples where uh, we had products, but we should not use integration by parts because they were better methods. But if we do have to in use integration by parts, uh, essentially you just have to identify uh, kind of the four parts here, the u, the dv, the du, and the v, and apply the formula. So we saw three examples where uh, applying this rule makes a lot of sense. I hope you found this helpful.